my channel and to a video I have wanted to film quite some time now um, as you can tell by the title it is gonna be three very simple very easy family friendly slow cooker recipes I honestly love a slow cooker I know I've seen a lot of these videos on YouTube um, my good friend mr. Carrington filmed one quite recently as well I'll link it down below we are a family well where I lived before I moved to London we're a family that relied on a slow cooker because we all came into the house at different times my mum would work shifts all that good stuff I'd come in from work from school all that stuff and it was just nice to be able to just help yourself these recipes are super super affordable really easy completely vegetarian because I am a vegetarian now so I have customized all of these recipes so you've got some classic recipes but with a vegetarian twist so we're going to be doing a very delicious sweet potato and coconut curry with some spinach and rice and all that good stuff. Dish number two is going to be my chestnut mushroom bolognese. Now that is a recipe that I've customised to make it slow cooker friendly. It is absolutely delicious. It's a recipe I got from a Gusto box way, way back, maybe like two years ago. And I've kept the recipe card and customised it slightly. So that's dish number two. And then dish number three is going to be a very delicious three bean sausage chilli bake. It is absolutely delicious. Usually a tray bake that you can do in 40 minutes. But with the customization of a slow cooker, you can bang it all in and you're absolutely good to go. That is one of my firm favorites. So yeah, if you do enjoy this video and you have really found it useful, as always, do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. Follow me over on Instagram. I'll leave my handle on the screen right now. There's my main account and then my food account. So if you do want to get some more recipe inspiration, head on over there. But yeah, let's get cracking. So this is the slow cooker that I use. It's a Morphe Richards one. My mum actually got me this when I first moved to London and it is so, so handy. It has um, three Three settings, so medium, low and high, but it also has a function that you can like um, seal meat. So if you are a meat eater, you can seal meat before you actually slow cook it in here, which is really good. It's a fairly sized uh, one as well. It's not like massive. So if you've got maybe a larger family, potentially get a bigger one, but this one works brilliant. And this is the list of all the ingredients you are going to need. Okay, so you're gonna need one can of chickpeas, a can of coconut milk, two cans of chopped tomatoes. You're also gonna need two uh, smallish onions or one large white onion. This is slow cooker chicken curry mix, but don't worry guys, it's super for vegetarians. A handful of spinach, two large sweet potatoes, and then we are serving it with some plain papadoms, some coriander naan bread, and some basmati rice. So super easy, super affordable ingredients that I feel like everyone can access right now. First start just with chopping the white onion, obviously removing the skins. It's a really good tip as well if you do chop your onions to first slice them one way, halve them and then slice them the other so it means you can get them like really fine. Um, it's something I just picked up in a little cookery class once and it just makes it a lot quicker to chop them up. And then I just added them into a frying pan with a little bit of olive oil. And then I just softened them down in a frying pan over like a medium heat and then I added some rock salt as well. It's really important to season the onions which helps them soften them down. I moved on to peeling the sweet potato. These were quite large sweet potatoes. I only ended up using one and a half potatoes, but obviously just go roughly on size. You need about, it's about 800 grams of sweet potato, but obviously this feeds a lot. We had a lot left over. And then I just cut them into, say, you know, centimetre chunks. Um, you haven't got to be too particular about it. Just ensure that they're all even so they cook evenly in the slow cooker. And then just pop them into the pan. And then I added the softened fried onions. Like I said, you don't want to like soften these too much, just really help them along and not give them like too much of a bite. It adds with the flavour as well and just give everything a stir. And I added the two chopped tomato cans directly into the slow cooker and then I just popped a little bit of water just to eke that out a little bit. And then I added the can of coconut milk. This was just regular coconut milk. You can use light coconut milk if you want to. Um, this was just all that Aldi had, so that's what's going in. And it doesn't look particularly appetizing at the minute, but trust me, it is absolutely delicious in a couple of hours. 
Then I added the Schwarz slow cooker chicken curry. As I said in the beginning, guys, this is suitable for vegetarians. It's just loads of spices. Um, there's no like chicken stock or chicken powder or chicken seasoning in here. It's literally just spices. It's a bit of a cop out, but like I say, it saves buying all the individual ingredients. And I think this was like 30p, which is so good. So it's like cumin, all that good stuff. And let's pop the lid on and I turned that on to a medium to high heat. I started off with a high heat and then turned it to medium. And then in about four hours time, I added a can of chickpeas and a hefty bunch of spinach. I know it looks like there's not enough room in this low cooker for this, but as we all know, spinach wilts down. As you can see, I'm trying to like aggressively push it in, but trust me, it wilted down in about five minutes. I left that for another hour and then I just cooked some basmati rice in a pan. You can of course use like microwaveable rice if you want to, you can have it with couscous or you can just have it on its own, it's completely up to you. But yeah, this had about six hours total cooking time and it was absolutely delicious. Really hearty, really filling and super tasty and completely vegan. Okay, so we're gonna go in for the curry. It looks absolutely delicious, super fresh, super fragrant. Um, I'd say, how when did I start this? Maybe like one o'clock, half past one? Yeah. So it's about, about six hours. Let's go for a taste. Mm. Yeah? That is good, you know. Oh, got a bit of a kick to it. That's nice. Proper winter warmer. And there's made enough in there for Zara and me to have for lunch tomorrow, and probably the next day as well. So we've just finished dinner and we have two lots of leftovers. So this is Zara's portion for lunch and this is mine. Obviously I eat a lot more food than Zara does. So we've got two lots of leftovers and still an absolute mound in this local because I'm going to pop the rest of that in the freezer to have a little dish. Okay, so the next recipe is our sausage casserole. This is like a classic in our house. We absolutely love it. I used to have it loads at home. Um, I'm using the corn sausages, but the Linda McCartney ones are better in my opinion. We just couldn't get our hands on them. Uh, we've got one can of sweet corn, a can of chopped tomatoes, a can of butter beans, some chestnut mushrooms, one red onion, some garlic cloves, and a stock cube. So I just started by topping and tearing the red onions and then halving them and halving them again. And then I pulled the red onions into like petals just to make sure that they're all individual just so they cooked better in the pan. Then I added the corn sausages. Like I say, do use whatever sausages you want. If you do have regular sausages, by all means use those as well. Um, but I just, these are the only ones that we could find in Audi, so we grabbed those. And then the chestnut mushrooms as well, I just clunked those up with a knife and then popped them in too. There's no like rhyme or reason about what you can put in this, guys. If you want to put a bit of potato in, you can. Some parsnips really good. Carrot is really nice. Just whatever you're fancying. But we had some mushrooms left over, so we thought we'd use them. And then we added a lot of garlic. We added four chunks of garlic in total. Um, and I just used the back of the knife to get the skins off and then roughly chop them up and pop that in. Then I added one can of chopped tomatoes and then one can of butter beans as well straight in and then the can of salt free sweet corn just pop that in too and then i added one vegetable stock cube and then a little bit of extra water just from the kettle just to have all that combined and a good glug of red wine and um, we had this left over and i thought it'd be really nice to add like another depth of flavor in there of course you can leave the wine out if you're not really feeling it but i love a bit of wine in my food and then I just popped the lid on, turned that on to a high heat to start off with, and then turned it down to medium. This had about, I'd say, seven hours cooking time in total. Um, really, really nice. Like I said, you can cook the sausages beforehand to give them a bit more color, but trust me, we love them just the same. And again, this made absolutely loads. You can serve it with whatever you want. We just had it with a little bit of garlic bread, and it was delicious. Okay, we're gonna go in for the taste test, guys. This is smelling good. It's quite whiny. I feel like I maybe put a splash too much wine in. Can you taste the wine? Oh, oh, that's good, you know. So tasty. Really hearty, really warm, and, and you can, of course, bake the sausages before they go into the slow cooker if you want a bit more colour, or maybe even fry them. It totally depends. I, I personally don't mind the button. That's good. We just served it with a bit of garlic bread just to, like, dip in. Absolutely 10 out of 10. Okay, so the last recipe we are making is this chestnut mushroom bolognese. It's so easy to make and it's really, really tasty. So ingredients wise, you're gonna need a can of chopped tomatoes and some ideally passata, but we couldn't find any. So we just blended up some tomatoes, some tomato puree, three cloves of garlic, a good punnet of chestnut mushrooms, ideally 300 grams, some celery sticks, we used two, some white onions, one stock cube, some spaghetti or pasta of your choice, and some red wine. 
So we just started by classically chopping up the white onion just to make sure that's all finely sliced. And then I added that into the frying pan with a little bit of olive oil and again, you know, the drill, a little bit of salt, all that good stuff. And just sweated that down for about four minutes just to make sure they got a little bit of color and they were nice and soft. And then I also chopped up the celery sticks, just gave them a bit of a rinse before I did this, guys. Um, and then just added those into the pan to soften as well. Celery is just a really nice option. It just gives another element of flavor and they're all, you know, it's all the onion family. Then I added the cloves of garlic that I just chopped up and popped those into the pan as well. And then into a blender, I added all of the cherry tomatoes, a little glug of the red wine and just blended those up. So this is our passata, guys. We couldn't really find any in the stores with what's going on in the minute. So um, we just had to be a little bit creative and this just worked just as well. So then into the slow cooker, I added the celery, onion and garlic. And then I finally chopped, well I didn't finally chop, I just sliced up the chestnut mushrooms. I used half the punnus to slice and then I'll show you what you do with the other half in a second. And then I added the DIY passata into the, the slow cooker. Don't worry guys, it doesn't look that appetizing but it tasted amazing at the end. Then I added the chopped tomatoes, tomato puree. Then I added the sliced mushrooms into the slow cooker. Then I grated the remaining chestnut mushrooms. Now the grating adds another textural element and it actually mimics mince. Trust me, when it's all coated, it works really, really well. Then I added one vegetable stock cube into the pan, a good glug of balsamic vinegar, I'd say about 10 mil, a sprinkling of oregano. And then I just stirred all that together to make sure it's all combined. I added a little bit of seasoning as well, just a pinch of black pepper and some sea salt just for seasoning. Um, I do season now, but I also do season at the end as well. Pop the lid on and I turned that on about a medium heat for I'd say about five hours, four and a half, five hours. And look at the end result. It is just absolutely delicious. The mince is obviously not mince, it's mushrooms, but it's so, so good. And then we just served it with a little mix of penne and facility pasta because that's what we had left and it needed eaten. So yeah, we just topped the pasta with the bolognese mix and that was our dinner. So easy and so tasty. Right guys, we're going in for the taste test. Here we go. This is the final slow cooker meal of the video. So hopefully it's a good one. Hopefully we end on a high. Um, of course you can make this with mince if you prefer. You can do it with corn mince, you can do it with spaghetti, tagliatelle, linguine, all of the above. Or just have it on its own. So tasty. Mm. It's literally one of my favourite things. This is good. Slightly improvised on the actual recipe. I'll link the actual gusto recipe down below because you don't traditionally do that in a slow cooker, but I'm glad we did this because it is delish. So good. And that's it, guys. That is our three simple slow cooker recipes. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Do let me know if you've got any recipes as well. I'd be really keen to try them out in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. As always, don't forget to click subscribe. Do give the video a thumbs up, and I'll catch you very soon for more recipes and more slow cooker ideas. Thank you so much for watching, and bye for now.